Mrs Fox's Wedding, retold by Sarah and Stephen Corrin, illustrated by Errol Lacane. She was very pretty, was Mrs Fox, and as smart as a young vixen as you could wish to meet. But now she was sitting up in her room a-weeping, because Mr Fox was dead, and where was she to find another such as he? Mr Fox, with his nine bushy tails and deep red velvet coat, with stockings to match, had been no ordinary fox so you may be quite sure she was not going to make do with the first gentleman who came along to woo her. Down in the kitchen, busy baking cakes and brewing beer, was Mrs Fox's maid, the dainty Miss Cat, in her neat little apron, her trim mop cap on her head and tiny golden rings on her toes. Rat-a-tat-tat came a knock at the door. It was the jovial Mr Wolf, the first suitor to come a-wooing the pretty Mrs Fox. "'Good morning, Miss Cat. Tis your mistress, I seek,' he said, as he gave her white whiskers a tweak. Miss Cat tripped nimbly upstairs and knocked at her lady's door. "'Tis a suitor who's called, and he waits in the kitchen, and if you will see him, I'll go down and fetch him.' Mrs Fox asked, "'Has he nine bushy tails? Is his coat of deep red, and stockings to match? Else him I'll not wed.' To which Miss Cat replied, Oh, mistress mine, he's no bushy tails nine, and his coat is all grey, I'm sorry to say. So down went Miss Cat and told Mr Wolf, I'm afraid, dear sir, you are not meant for her. The next suitor to come knocking at the door again begged audience of the winsome Mrs Fox, but when he was announced, Mrs Fox inquired, Has he nine bushy tails? Is his coat of deep red and stockings to match? Else I cannot him wed. To which Miss Cat replied, Oh, mistress mine, he's no bushy tails nine, and his coat is all yellow, this latest young fellow. For this second suitor was none other than a dashing young lion. With the third suitor, it was the same again, for he had no coat of red. His coat was black and white, for he was none other than a gay young dog. So he too was dismissed. Close on his heels came a fourth candidate, but he too was unsuitable. He had neither nine bushy tails, nor a coat of deep red, and what is more, he had two horns and a little goatee beard, which you would expect, for he was none other than a capering billy goat. The next suitor to arrive at Mrs Fox's door also had horns, and his coat was brown. So he was no good either, for he was a stately young stag. The next rat a came from a furry suitor who greeted Miss Cat with a great hug and begged her to let him see Mrs Fox. But, of course, he fared no better, for you see the hug he had given Miss Cat was none other than a bear hug. Next there came to the house to win her as a spouse, and on her door knocks, guess what? It's a fox. So up tripped Miss Cat eagerly to announce the newcomer to her mistress, who asked, Has he nine bushy tails? Is his coat of deep red? And stockings to match? Else him I'll not wed. Alas, sighed Miss Cat, he has all of that, but herein he must fail. He's but one bushy tail. The next day, a second fox followed, who had but two tails. Then a third, who had only three. A fourth had four, and a fifth had five. Then a sixth arrived with six bushy tails, and a seventh with seven. And an eighth lacked but one for the deal to be done. Then, one bright morning, guess who came along? He knocked at the door with a -a rat-a-tat-tat, and of course it was answered by pretty Miss Cat. She ups to the room to her mistress so dear, and awaits all her questions without any fear. Has he nine bushy tails? Is his coat of deep red, and stockings to match, else I cannot him wed. To which Miss Cat replied, in a voice oh so glad, he has all of those, he's a regular lad. Then up sprang Mrs Fox with a whoop of delight to meet her young wooer, and oh what a sight, he was handsome, and charming, and dashing, and fine, with red coat and stockings, and tails he had nine. Without more ado, and with no loss of time, she curtsied and kissed him and said, You are mine. 
So the wedding of Mr and Mrs Fox was celebrated and you may be sure that our pretty Miss Cat made the loveliest of bridesmaids. There was much merriment and dancing and for all we know, they may be dancing there still. <laughs>